Now, am I back? I am unsure. I'm unsure if I'm back or not. Yes. Yes, I am. Okay. I bet you it's because the missus is watching something on her phone upstairs. But anyways, yes, we're back. We're back in business. They're like, the hell with you guys? I'm going home. Click. <laughs> Oh no, am I off again? No, I'm not. I'm okay. I thought I was gone again. But anyways. So what were we talking about before I got so unceremoniously kicked offline? Hey, are any of you guys watching this Alinity PewDiePie thing? Did I ask you that last week? Any of you guys into Twitch thoughts or know anything about them? Just check your texts again. Okay, let me check. Ooh, okay. I think Wrangler Star has has something like that too. Guys, check this out. Check this out. You see the, the winch coming down from the ceiling there? Is that, that's got that spreading bar and everything. So I guess that's for hanging what? Is that cattle? Is that cattle or is that like deer sized? Is it the same size? Which thought is it's um, Twelve inch, uh, half inch stainless steel, cattle size, but you can use it for deer, bear, pigs, and stuff. Uh, Anthony, I Twitch thought is a girl who is on Twitch, which is essentially kind of like live streaming, um, but people give you tips and stuff. And these girls, they sort of you know waggle their arse and show heavy cleavage and say silly things, and get paid good money. But like they they play up on the uh, the seductive aspect rather than like twitch is essentially for video gamers you know you can watch someone playing i don't know fortnite or whatever but these twitch thoughts they do more shaking their boobs and their cleavage than anything else and anyway, so pewdiepie who is uh the uh, number one youtuber called one of them a twitch thought and she went after him and it blew up in her face as she deserved Anyways, I thought it was the whole story was really funny, but if you guys don't know anything about it, then it's not really worth talking about. I almost feel like I brought this up last week. I don't remember what I brought up last week. Like, I don't leave the live streams up for very long yet, if I remember to take them down, because... Um, Um, I don't like the live streams gumming up my feed in terms of, you know, watch the next video, watch the next video, watch the next video. Like, I find that people who like my live streams and people who like my videos are completely different. So I, 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 I make the live streams um, private after uh, after about a week, I guess. I've been going for about a week. But anyway, I thought, Outdoor, when you said you got a new tool, I thought you'd got one of those knives we were talking about on, on the, uh, the Ebays. On the Ebays? It's funny that you, that, uh, was it Jeff who was asking about my, my car purchase? I was just thinking about it while I was in traffic today. It'll be nice to have wheels on my own again, so that I can, you know, be a little more mobile. But, you know, 
the thing is, during the week, I rush in the morning to get the kid to school on time and me to work on time, and then I rush at night from work to get the kid before 6 o'clock so that I don't end up paying by the minute. And then, you know, I try to have the kid in bed by 7.30. So during the week, my life is kind of on hold except for, you know, doing this live stream. So when the weekend hits, I don't want to be not in the forest or not building my workbench or not, you know, doing all the things that I'm trying to do and not getting done, you know? And But the thing is, I can't really go taking the missus's car away on the weekend because then she's stuck here. And like, you know, her mom lives a 45 minute drive away and Camille's dad's class is a 20 to 40 minute drive away depending on traffic. Although Saturday she had her final recital. So that's done for the summer. But like I don't feel it would be fair to go yanking the car and hitting and hitting the woods for for a day. Because of, you know, how much of what this family's life is. <clears throat> Yes, I know that one. Is is far, far away. Well, not far, far, but you know, far away. <clears throat> no, 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 knives yet, but Father's Day is coming when Mrs. Dauber asked me what I'd like. I'm sending her the link for, for the Nesmuk. Yeah, good man. Yeah, that's what you should do. I don't really zen to be sharpening knives and like not. Not not, not making a huge production out of it, you know, just sharpening a knife on a, on a little stone or a, or a plate or something. Because usually when I do sharpening, especially when it's like uh, the, like the, the plain tools and stuff, as I, the, the plain blades, as I, as I was telling you, can I start that sentence again? Take two. Snap. Because I find... Um, like when I'm sharpening plain blades, maybe draw knives, you know, the big tools, it gets to be a real production. Like I've got my sandpaper out or my stones in the water and, you know, setting up the Lansky angled thing and blah, blah, blah. But this is, this is way more sort of low key. This is more, you know, chill and sharpen. That feels good and sharp, but... Not much on the on the hair popping uh, side. Now, Scott, are you waving to someone or are you putting your hand up because you want to say something? Mm -hmm. Or are you counting five? I bet he's just counting five. There goes my signal again. She's definitely watching something up there. <sighs> of course. Let me know if I come back online, okay? This is frustrating because um, we upgraded our internet access so that I wouldn't have this problem. Not back yet, eh? Oh, there I am. So frustrating. You're saying that this bugs me because we we upgraded our internet access and our router and everything. Hopefully, so that I wouldn't have that problem, that bandwidth problem. But here we are again. Bandwidth your little problems. Maybe there's a way I can cheat it somehow. Change the antennae on my uh, router or something to get unbelievable power. You know what I'm saying? I 
That's weird because there it says I'm I'm still streaming, but here it keeps telling me that I've that I'm falling offline. I don't get it. You guys will let me know if I disappear, right? You know. That is interesting. Hold on. I'm gonna re I'm gonna reload this page. Okay, so I'm back on. Okay, I'm back on the, I'm back to the streaming. I, uh, it's frustrating when that happens, man. I'm trying to bring you guys some, like, some really good content, you know? I dropped for a good 45 sex, yeah, I know. Um, it seemed like that for me as well. Sure, I'm glad we we're spending more on supposedly better internet access now. More bandwidth, all that. Makes me happy as a pig in ship. Now that wasn't very family friendly, was it? Sorry guys. Still no LT tonight, eh? What's going on with him? Maybe him and Simo are off planning something nefarious. I had originally thought that it was going to be Simo and Outdoor Dauber, but Outdoor is actually here tonight. He's present and accounted for. So I don't know. I don't know. Hey, how many of you guys are, um, how many of you guys are actually bushcrafters, specifically? <laughs> Outdoor. <laughs> I love it. So Simone's still standing on a street corner somewhere, saying, where the hell is he? We were supposed to plan nefarious deeds. LT shows up. It's okay, mon ami, I'm here. We can do it without Outdoor. Maybe they're waiting for you at the border because you're buying all the cool stuff on eBay and throwing it across the border. All right, Anthony, have a rest up, man. I'm glad to hear your surgery was all right. Nice to know you're back in business. Let's see. Excuse me. No, still. Oh yeah, a little bit. Not not hair popping, but it's cutting some. I'm not even gonna try the paper test on that. I think I still gotta work on it. Primitive campy and stuff, yeah. Because I'm wondering, like, how many of you guys use Scandinavian axes versus, like, council tool or some cheap Chinese junk? Or, you know, you sort of roll your own, find an old axe head and build something. Because, like, I've got about half and half Scandinavian and, like, ancient stuff. I don't have a council tool yet. But... Yeah, Scott's keeping uh, keeping track with. Yeah. But like you know, if you go by my Instagram, everyone's got a Scandinavian axe, you know. And uh, if you go by maybe someone else's Instagram, everyone's got a council tool. I don't know. I'm just wondering what, because I've got this this idea that your online network no matter what it is twitter facebook instagram it's always it's it's an it's an echo chamber right you end up surrounded and linked and friended by people who are similar to you in, in their tastes and stuff and then uh sales okay cheap cheap chinese garbage for you for now okay you know so of course to me everyone i would see on 
online as a Grantsfors Brook or a, or a Wetterlings, you know? I'm fascinated by that stuff, how what you see online is almost more of a reflection of who you are than what the world is. I guess for, I mean, it, I'm, I don't want to get political, but, you know, it, this is also true of politics, uh, movies you like, stuff like that, you know? And I just wonder if, like, because my Instagram feed is such an echo chamber, if I get this weird idea that everyone's got a Gransfors, but it's actually not that many people. Well, I know that Gransfors is selling more axes than, than they can keep up with, right? But, um... I don't know. I find it, it's an interesting question, you know? Getting there. I mean, it's, it, it doesn't have any dings out of it or anything. It was... Thankfully, it really did get dull when I was chopping up that amadou, though. Definitely, definitely. Well, it passes the nail, the nail test, that's for sure. The Canadian belt knife. That's going to be sharp enough for tonight, I think. I mean, I, I've brought it back from the dead, that's for sure. Like, before it was bonafide dull, dude. Now it's it's just it's sharp. Just not hair-popping sharp. I'm just trying to get comfy here. Sitting on a stump is not the best way to do this. I gotta tell you, I mean, when I get this place organized, I'm gonna sit in a real chair. Better for the arse to sit in a chair than on a stump, let me tell you. I'm just throwing that out there. You don't have to agree with me. You should though, because I'm right. You guys been watching Joe Robinette's series of, you know, his 10 days, 10 items series? I have a hard time watching anything that's over an hour. Not because I get bored, but just because I have a hard time getting that much time. <laughs> but I've been watching it. He's a, he's up there in the Boreal, where he was. He's, he's home now, but it's just beautiful landscape up there, man. I really want to, I want to hit the Boreal Forest at some point. There's nothing like it, judging by the photos and the TV shows and the this and the that. I've never seen the boreal for myself, though. It's funny because around here we have this really weird conception of what we are. Like, you'll hear, like, a lot of... I'm saying like too much here. <coughs> I'm sure there's extra burp juice in here. Like, you'll hear in the discourse here in Montreal that people talk about, you know, the Boreal, you know. There's a, a publishing company called Boreal. And there's a beer called Boreal and all this. But we're not in the Boreal forest this far south. We're in a mixed broadleaf and... I don't remember exactly what it's called. I think it's called mixed broadleaf, but it's not Boreal until you get further up north. And, uh... Oh. Hold on. Hold on, hold on. Uh, Scott just ordered a Unigear twig stove. What the hell's a Unigear twig stove? Never heard of that. You got a URL or something you can share with the class? Unigear twig stove. Outdoor says, back to your question about who are bushcrafters. Specifically, I was going to try to get... Oh, man, I would love to take a cold cracker course. Um, 
that would be especially partly because he he's just he's such an interesting dude you know um i'm looking up that twig stove what was it called unigear Unigear twig stove. Boom, baby. What do we got? What do we got? Unigear, Unigar. Unigear folding camping twig stove. Overview. Oh. Oh. Is it this one? Whoops. What the crap? Why well, you gotta be like that, man? Is it this one? Except, forget about the, the pan? Interesting. How come I can't move anything? Touch the image to zoom in. I don't want to zoom in. Uniger... Unigear, Unigear, wood burning camp stoves, picnic barbecue cooker, potable water, potable st folding, stainless steel backpacking stove. That is a mouthful, but it looks like a good size, especially for thirty bucks U.S. <clears throat> Interesting. I didn't even know that that existed. Uh, hold on, what am I, what's going on? Oh, okay, see you later, Outdoor. Have a good night. Uh, Scott, I would love to know what you think of that stove when it arrives. Because that looks like a nice size for a twig stove. Um, like my, um... <clears throat> my little hobo stove, my IKEA hobo stove, it's pretty small. But this looks like it might actually be a good size. And it's not too hard to put together. $29.99 US. I'm at, yeah, Amazon.com. Uh, okay, hold on. Here, hold on here, guys. Let's see what that costs in, in the Canadias. <laughs> Denied. Looking for something? We're sorry. The web address you've entered is not a functioning page for our site. But the American one does ship to Canada. So you know what? Let me just pretend I'm going to buy it. Add to cart. Pretend I'm going to buy it. Let's not actually do it. Just because that, that price seems unbelievable to me. Click. Add to cart, for God's sakes. Proceed to checkout. Add a two-year warranty? No? Oh, it's going to make me sign in. To hell with it. Never mind. Ain't doing it. Ain't going to do it. But yeah, let me know how you how you like that stove when it arrives, because uh, that looks cool to me. Definitely. Oh, I lost my uh, my Amazon affiliate ship because I did not sell three um, not approved, but you know three items linked directly to the links um, in 180 days. It's okay, I, you know, I, at the level I'm at, stuff like that is always a a um long shot anyway so I'll just try again when I'm up around 10,000 if I ever get up around 10,000 what's gonna happen tonight is I'm gonna lose another four every time I do a live stream I lose like four subs and then I slowly build back up to like 2146 and then lose another four it's it's driving me crazy I've been doing the same dance for three months now and I don't know what it is that keeps sinking me I know that part of it is just that Amazon periodically goes through and, you know, eliminates all the dormant 
accounts and everything, great, but it's just driving me nuts. I mean, I'm throwing all this work into trying to grow my channel. Okay, this week notwithstanding because of the, uh, you know, losing half my footage. And so just going to bed instead of reshooting at midnight last night. But it just kills me, man. Like, I'm sharing my videos everywhere I can. I'm, I'm you know, I'm trying to grow and it just ain't happening. And I know. I, I've heard it from several guys now. Get into the forest with an axe, make some bacon, and the subs will come. I get it. I know. I know. My life is just constantly getting in the way. One pound. You let me know how it works. Yeah, yeah, because if, if, if it's not crap, then that price is um, exciting as hell. Because I'm always on the lookout for a stove that will make me retire my little Ikea hobo stove. You know, something that folds flat and that I can afford. Because um, the little Ikea stove does kind of take up a lot of weight. Excuse me, a lot of weight because you can't fold it up, right? It's, it's a cutlery caddy. It's circular. And I, I don't have... Like some guys who are who who go seriously into that like that little IKEA stove, um, they find stainless bottles and stuff that fit it perfectly, and you know they they just they build their entire cook kit around it, um, which is a legit choice for sure, absolutely, you know. I don't think it was nine. I don't remember being nine. But, you know, I, I would like something that I can just fold flat and put in my backpack. And I, I don't really want to spend like 130 bucks on, on, a, on, um, on a folding twig stove. I definitely don't want to spend 200 bucks on a titanium folding twig stove. And I want something bigger than like those ultra mini ones. Like I, I like the larger sized ones. Just because I feel that when I'm boiling water... Larger pieces of twig are better than smaller, you know And so that's what's been keeping me from completely replacing my my little Ikea stove Because I've got you know th that gift from one of you guys I think it's in here with the kettle Is it Anthony that sent me this right I've got this little titanium guy here Okay, so I'll, I'll see you But I don't know if that would even be big enough to boil more than like a half cup of water, you know? This is titanium. TI. It's a titanium firebox nano, I think. Titanium, you know? It just keeps the weight down. It's high quality. It's expensive as shit. As hell, sorry. <laughs> yeah, it just says firebox. I think this is called the Nano, this tiny, tiny one. You know, where you've got these little tiny ports for putting in your, your, your sticks. <clears throat> and this size, I find that, I feel that if you're not weighing it down, I kind of feel like, whew, and it flips over, you know? But I still, I can't wait to, to get this... Uh, to get this into action because like right now for instance there's a, a fire ban happening in Quebec well probably not now because of the weekend we've just had but up until the weekend there'd been a fire ban in effect because it was really really dry and so if I was if I had hit the uh, the woods this weekend I would have had to use my my nano stove or my um, this nano stove or my uh, <clears throat> my hobo stove you know because he it was an open fire ban couldn't have an open fire and I don't know about you guys but I don't want to be the one who burnt down half the province just because I had to be elbow crafty <clears throat> I 
feel that that would not be <laughs> the best use of my time. <laughs> But, you know, I'm just, you know, I'm now I'm paranoid that I'm, I'm, I've, I've popped back offline, right? So I keep looking over at the, uh, the live, uh, what's it called? Live dashboard to make sure I'm still online. Still talking all yous, to all yous guys. Recently picked up some uh, some goggles for working with. Uh, I figured I I really got to start being a little safer when I'm working online, like on camera. I've been sort of thinking about getting safer when I'm working anyway, but on camera, every time I do something that's kind of questionable, and I know it, uh, someone sort of dings me for it. <laughs> well, deserve it. I'm not complaining. You know, I deserve it. So I got these goggles because nothing can get around them. Like when I'm working down here with the thickness planer and stuff, there's a lot of dust and I find that it sort of gets behind my glasses and into my eyes. These will not let that happen. And it's a German. They're made in Germany. I think they're made in Germany. The company is German. Um, inside. What? Inside. Augenseite. Yeah, they're German, all right. Oh, I see. That's telling me which which side of the glass, because the um, the lenses. I'm not gonna do it, but the lenses are replaceable. You screw this off, you pop the lens back in. So that's telling me which side of the glass is the uh, is the inside. Oh, Gonzaita. Okay. <laughs> Beer's done. Tea's not. Ah, oh, it's too bad outdoors. Um, gone because I was gonna say that I've started a couple of fires with that Amadou now. Good stuff. Good stuff that Amadou. I'm really glad I finally decided to do it. I'd always been like, <coughs> it's funny because I'm always scared off of projects when it sounds like they're gonna be too involved. But once I start and I get into the groove of it, I was always just a dummy for not wanting to get to get going on it, you know. And so now that I've done it, you know, I've, I've smashed up the Amadou, I've boiled it in birch um, coal. It works really well. It, it's it's not as easy to light as like a, um, a char cloth, that's for sure. But it's, it scratches that, that itch that I always keep talking about of, you know, doing something the way someone a long freaking time ago would do it. It makes me kind of want to put together an Ötzi the Iceman um, survival pack, you know, <laughs> or, or a fire kit. Um, you know Ötzi the Iceman, right? The, the guy who was found in the Alps just on the Italian side of the Austro-Italian border. Um, died, well, I think it was about 6,000 years ago. Murdered. Interestingly... They uh, sampled the blood on his arrows, and he had shot two of his attackers with the same arrow. So this guy is the baddest of asses. And uh, on May 21st, I turned a year older than he got to. So I feel having outlived the baddest of asses, I got something to be proud of. But I keep thinking about maybe trying to put together an Ötzi the Iceman fire kit, you know? Because obviously back then, well, or at least... He used Amadou, um, and he had what they had originally thought. Well, they're not unanimous. I'm not unanimous about this, but what was thought to have been a, a flint dagger is thought now to have been um, a piece of flint on a handle for, for you know, hitting like a pyrite or something or another rock to make sparks go. Part of me wants to make one and like put together this ancient kind of fire kit, you know? See if I can make it work for a fire. Oh, I would also like to make a, you know, a, a Donto Duas, the South African fire kit. It's a, uh, do you guys know about these? See, I was just back. 
Serge is back. Hello, Serge, you are back. I just realized I still have a whole bunch of those um, seed tubes on this, on this one. Gotta get rid of them seed tubes. Gotta get rid of that coffee critters. What is it? Honey crisp. A tonto duos is a um, it's a South African fire kit. Okay, the way, essentially the way you make it is um, traditionally like you would take a, a brass tube, plumbing tube or something that you can get the brass caps to go on. Okay, and you do this paracord or something stretchy or whatever. You drill holes in the caps. Gonna draw you a little picture. So what you got here is a tube. Okay, and you've got caps on either side. This cap is lying down here, okay? All right, there's a cap, there's a cap. Here's your tube, here's a, a, a string, okay? You've drilled holes in your caps and inserted the string through, okay? Now, that string is is tight enough that you've made a steel, a fire steel, out of an old file, okay? Let's be obvious, okay? So there you have a steel made out of an old fire, a file. It's been cut off square and little notches are put in, okay? So that when you put your your caps and your string, okay, the string holds the fire steel. Now inside here, what you have is, I think traditionally would have been a cotton batten or cotton wool, as our British and South Africans friends say. Full, full, full. Nowadays, what you would use is, um, you know those cotton mop heads with like, that are ropes, kind of? 100% cotton, stuff that scrap right in there. Then you light one side of it, get it nice and charred up. You close it up. And then what you do is, for fires, you know, you push it out. You also need to be carrying a flint. Right? You tack, and you light the, um, the tom to the, the, the charred part of the, um, the cotton. Use it to start your fire. And then you put the cap back on so that it doesn't all burn out. Burn out. You know, you... you, you Close it off, cut out the um, the oxygen, you know, the, the triangle of fire, right? Oxygen, fuel, and heat. Once you take away the oxygen, it stops burning. Um, I kind of want to make one or maybe two of them and give one away or something. Like, I, I like the aesthetic of it. I like the, 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 the idea of it. Let me see if I can find a video <clears throat> so that you guys can see what the actual spelling is because I don't quite remember what the spelling of Tonto do is. Tonto do is. You too, bitch. I think it's T-O-N-T. Ah, oh, that's wrong. Tabernoosh. Didn't mean to do that. Ride, ride to Tonto do us back. Okay, that's a little more modern with the uh, with the ferro rod on it. Uh, you're not seeing the words that way. Eh? Hold on. T-O-N-T-E-L-D-O-O-S. I'll write that for you guys. And you can check it on the interwebs. 
I've also seen it spelled like this, but I don't know if that's correct. But yeah, I want to try making one. I like the idea of it. I, I like the idea of any any tool. The reason I like this knife so much is because I like any tool that fulfills several different tasks, okay? And with this knife, I can do kitchen chores. I can fire a ferro rod. I can actually do... Um, flint and steel if I hold the flint here and I or if I hold the the, the blade and I tap the uh, the flint across it I can chop wood I can baton I can drill like it's good for anything and I always go for a um, a non sorry I just started the, the tunnel to do this video I always go for a um, a high gloss blade so that if I'm lost, I can use it as a signal mirror. That's why I got rid of the Bear Grylls knife. I need I need this kind of blade where I can use it to to fire a signal uh, to as a signal mirror if I'm lost or something. But so what I like about the Tonto do is is it's a fire kit that takes up no space practically. It's a little tube, right? So I like it. I think, um, and it's self-contained. You know, I don't need to carry the big box or the blue, or the blah, the blue. Little self-contained little tube. Uh, am I about to lose my signal again? If I lose my signal again, I'm I'm cutting it because I'm I'm too frustrated now. <laughs> no, we're good. Um, yeah. So I like the fact that you can throw an entire fire kit into your into your pocket. I find that compelling as hell. Um, and I think they're pretty damn easy to make. You know? I think we're gonna make a couple. Maybe maybe this summer I'll make a couple. Just to sort of just to see how easy they are. I wonder if people would be interested to see interested in seeing that. And also, as I, I keep telling you guys, I have a real mal d'Afrique, you know? Pretty much anything from, from South Africa I'm going to be interested in seeing. Aside from we're not, you know... As long as we don't get political about this, you know? Um, yeah, maybe I'll do it. Because it's real simple, right? It's 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 boneheaded simple to get the, the, the tube. You're just talking about, like, uh, plumbing tube. Brass plumbing tube or copper, even. In fact, copper. I think you can get brass tube of some sort, but I think the plumbing tube is all copper. It doesn't matter. I like the the color of copper anyway. But yeah, I think it's it would be really cool to make one. Um, I've got plenty of files that I can chop into a into a fire steel. You know, that's that's definitely no problem. So yeah, maybe I'll try and make a don't do us or two. Maybe I'll try to make them before we do the summertime camp. Oh, excuse me, guys. How come nobody's commenting anymore? Or do I, should I just... I'm going to reload this page. I've been like... Everything is weird tonight. And we're back. Okay. Um, yeah, everything is weird tonight, man. Like my like on the tech side, come on, dude. Really? Is this how it's gonna be? Jeez. But anyways. Yes, okay, I will do that. I will make a tonto do us. Or two, maybe two tonto do us. Two little South African fire kits. Cause like well maybe I'll just I'll give one away or something. I'll keep one, give one away. And uh Sam's was listening, good man, good man. Um That would be a good video, actually. Making one and then using it. It's... F yeah, that, that would be cool. Hey, animals are on the beach. 
It's my daughter's little game, Hank the Talking Dog or some damn thing. Oh, it's this one. You know, it's funny because I, I told you guys that I, I got onto the mailing list to see when the um, the Bushcraft, uh, the Bush Camp, the Base Camp X um, Canadian Belt Knife was back in production, but that was a few months ago. That was, in fact, right after I did the, um, the First Impressions video on this one. And they still haven't let me know that that one's back in production. It's too bad because I really want to. I really want to try it out. I very much want to do a video between like a twenty dollar Canadian belt knife and a hundred dollar Canadian belt knife. I kind of know how it's going to go, but if I can get like, if I could do eighty percent with this of what I can do with a hundred dollar one, win right? Because this is a twenty dollar knife and it's a fourteen dollar knife in Canada, twelve bucks in the states, if I'm remembering properly. And I've been using it since I did that video. So I call it an epic win. Sales has copper tubing. You want to try and make one as well? So yes, let's uh That's what I was uh, that's what I was thinking about that. Somebody just came online. Who just joined up? How's it going, man? Whoever you are, let me know who you are. Let me know how it's going. Let me know if you're having a drink. I had a beer earlier, but I'm finished. I also have been doing a lot of work on this. Remember I dropped it last last um, last live stream? Bonk right on the, the concrete floor in here. So I fixed that. But then I, I was using it for yard work uh, this, this weekend when, while I was... Um, prepping to build my new fence I was using it for you know cutting open bags of like gravel and stuff so I had to give the oh it's Hamza hey how's it going ha you guys uh, Hamza did a uh, a shout out video I think it was this week eh? a few days ago which I found interesting because I, I found some new new channels to check out I'm running out of time to check out all the channels I want to check out, you know, even just the bushcraft guys, because I watch a lot of different stuff, but I like to watch a lot of the bushcraft channels because um, I'm very into keeping the community going. The, the community aspect is really important to me, you know, I want to feel that, you know, us bushcrafty guys, are, you know, we're, we're watching it for each other kind of thing. Hamza, what time is it where you are, man? Because it's like, it's 1030 here. Like, I don't know what time zone you're in. Are you like three hours ahead of us? So is it like 130 there? I'm just, just, I'm just sort of trying to go off of like, right now we're, because we're in daylight savings. We're at Greenwich minus four here. Three thirty-one. Oh, Hamza, you're a brave man being up at three thirty-one. Are you just getting up, or are you just not gone to bed yet? Well, three thirty-one. Okay. Hamza, do you guys have Amadou out where you are? Do you know what Amadou is? Like, here it grows on birch trees and I think beech or something. And then we process it down to this, right? So when it's growing, it looks like this. It's a kind of mushroom. This is a terrible... Yeah, this, this is more what it looks like. See, it grows like this. This one I've already cut in half. And then, you know, you, you get rid of... Well, you probably watched my video on this. Like you get rid of the spore tubes and right there, that stuff there, um, you cut out, you, you mash it flat with a hammer or something, and then you boil it in birch tar, uh, birch um, dust. 
Serge, c'est quoi le mot? Birch ash for an hour. And then it's a really good fire starter. Do you guys have this? Uh, lots of it. Okay. Yeah, because it's. I only really recently discovered it. When I did that video, I was like, that's it. I watched it. Emily's, uh, Emily's Outdoor Advent. Take three. I watched an Emily's Outdoor Adventures video where she made, where she was using some of this. And I was like, I'm, I'm trying it. I'm really happy I did. It's so good. And like, you know, char cloth, you do this and I go, Pfft, right? It just disappears. But this, you can really, you know, you, you scratch it up and like it, it's got some body to it. The Whereas sometimes when I'm using um, flint and steel on char cloth, it's like tap, tap, tap. And my char cloth is all gone, so, you know? So I'm really into this. Really. But the thing is, <clears throat> I don't want to just go picking the, uh, the, the, um, the fungus wherever I find it, because apparently it takes forever for this to grow into like a mature size. Um, when I found these, I picked like six of them because I didn't know that it took so long for this stuff to grow. I should have just taken like one or two. You know, but the thing is also, you never know when you're, when you're popping one of these off a tree, how much amadou you're going to get. So you may take a really big one and it's all these damn spore tubes practically, you know? So I was trying to sort of cover my butt there, you know? And Hamza, do you do it the same way? Do you boil it in, in birch ash or do you just pound it and use it? Because I know that there are two ways of doing it. One is just you pound it and you use it, and the other is you boil it up. Um, it seems to me that boiling it in the in the birch ash makes it work a little easier, but I don't really know. The natural world gives us such amazing things. You know, it's absolutely, the world is such a beautiful place in so many ways. Like, like traditional knowledge can just, it's so much fan, fantastic knowledge and materials out there. So much fantastic stuff you can do, you know? <clears throat> still online just let me make sure I'm still online here guys yes I'm still online I've been having some trouble staying online tonight so I'm a little paranoid on this one I've still got a few of the um the tubes that I, I didn't get off so I'm just going to scrape it a little bit while we chat Serge and I have been trying to figure out, he'd like to do a couple of videos with me, and um, I think that's a good idea. I'd like to, to have some, I'd like to have some guests on my videos starting this year, um, you know, or maybe like a, an occasional guest star or something, you know, kind of thing. So we've been trying to figure out what to do together, and I've got some ideas. That's why I was asking you earlier, Serge, if you have a, a beat to hell axe. Axe head. I think I have an idea. Oh, speaking of axes, Hamza, have you uh, decided what to do about about buying an axe? Are you going to get something Italian or are you going to go for something Swedish? Oh. Hey, Mike Morton's here. Fortunately, too late to see that I forgot to, to have a glass with my beer tonight. Ha 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 ha. Yeah, okay, I just had to get those um, those spore tubes off of there. But, you, you know, I'm, I'm serious, man. The, the, the stuff that the world gives us to work with. Like, somewhere, at some point, someone was like, there's a fungus growing on that tree. I bet you I could take that thing off of there, cut it open, boil it in birch ash, and have an amazing fire starter. That was the sound of my mind blowing. 
you know? Same thing with like maple syrup, okay? Because, you know, I'm Canadian, so of course, <laughs> everything comes back to maple syrup. Uh, who the hell thought, hey, there's goo coming out of this tree. Let's boil it and eat it. Especially when, like, because maple syrup is really, the process is really intense, right? 40 liters of syrup, uh, 40 liters of sap gives you a liter of, of syrup, okay? So that wasn't by mistake that they, re that they discovered that. You know, uh, Hamza, okay, yeah, you've, you've done both. Which do you find works better? Do you find that it works better when you boil it in the birch ash? Mike, you're from, you're in Charleston? What else is Mike Martin doing in Charleston? Wait, you don't live in a Charleston, do you? To me, Charleston is is a, is a specific town. I'm just going to look up Charleston and see if there's one in Ontario or something. I'll tell you one thing real clear and for free. This is a lot easier when I've got an iPad sitting here. The only Charleston showing up here is South Carolina. Are you in South Carolina, mister? Really? What are you doing in South Carolina? By the way, I hear that Charleston is gorgeous. Or at least it was during, back uh, in the Civil War era. Is it, uh, is it even half of what I hear? The city, I mean, not the dance. Oh, a nuclear air cleaning conference. Okay. Serge loves the delay. Yeah, Mike. Yeah, I, 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 that's what I hear. I hear that it's gorgeous. I do, in fact, hear that it's gorgeous. I've got. I've graduated from beer onto tea because I finished the beer. Mike, here's what I had tonight. Coup de canon. A uh, black beer brewed with coffee. And I know it's backwards. I know. 500 mil, 5% alcohol by volume. Third world city in North. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, check this out. I almost, like, not bombastic, being absolutely truthful with you. I almost got killed on the streets, on the highways, twice last week. And this is, oh man, I don't know what the hell. So check this out. Um, and it's funny, because now that I'm thinking back on it, I realize that we no longer have a first aid kit in the car. So I got to fix that quickie Frisco. Um, on Tuesday, we got some seriously bad news, family related, not, not stuff I can talk about online because it's the missus's family, but we got some bad freaking news. Um, so I left work to go home, you know, and be there for when the missus gets home just to see if she's okay, whatever. Um, but I'm calm, right? I was on the phone with her, I was upset, but by the time I got behind the wheel, I was, I was calm. Because I'd, I'd been doing like a breathing thing all the way to the car. So I, I'm booting along the highway. Now here's the thing. We get onto the highway called the 40, which is one of the, the main east-west ones up at the top of Montreal. There's another one down at the bottom called the 20. And then there's like the 13 and the 15, which cross them both. Near work, I get onto the 40 right near where the, thir where the 13 is. And so it's a four-lane highway. The right-hand lane is always blocked right up to where I get on because the 13 is terrible. Fairly often, the next one over is also blocked because people go and then try to zipper merge, but it gets sort of backed up. So I come on, and I go over to the third lane, and I and I just I hit it. I'm, I'm booming. And in front of me, there's a uh, an 18-wheeler truck just sitting there. And I know exactly what happened. The guy's sitting there, and he suddenly thought, to hell with this and turned into the next lane. Like, and threw his blinkers on halfway through, starting to go. 
And I was going, and right behind me there was a Nissan Leaf in the really fast lane, just coming right up my backside, except over one. And by the when this truck decided to go into the next lane, I was already almost at the end of the truck. <clears throat> so it's like, move, blink, blink. That guy's coming right up my ass, and I just, I, I you know, truck, leaf, truck, leaf. I picked the leaf, so I just, I swerved. You know, I <clears throat> threw my blinkers on, swerved, honking at the truck. <clears throat> and this guy, I, I don't know how he missed me. There was just enough of a shoulder that he threw himself over and went <clears throat> right past me, honking at me the whole way because he hadn't, I guess he hadn't seen when I threw myself over into the next lane that that truck was also coming over or something. Or maybe, or maybe he was honking at the truck. I don't know. But he went <clears throat> past me, like missed me by this much. I missed the truck by this much. And just kept on going. And I had this real creepy feeling all up and down my back the whole way home. You know? Because I was thinking what was happening. The trucker was sitting there and like, I, I can't handle this anymore. To hell with it. I'm going, you know, into the next lane. And I was just like, dear universe, don't do this to the missus. You know? Which in some ways is maybe a selfish way of looking at it, like, but... Oh. And then, like, on the Friday, I'm booting it home, same hot. well, on the, the 15, which is the other highway, the one that I come down to go home, and there's this merge lane, and this guy, I don't know what he was doing, but I was booting it along, but slowly, because traffic, and there was a car behind me, you know, the, the two-second cushion, right? And some guy, and like, the, the lane was disappearing right between us, and some guy just came booting down, just like missed the guy behind me, his bumper, and suddenly noticed I was there and threw on the brakes, but it's kind of gravelly there, so he slid, and like, finally came to a stop, like, and I was looking at this guy in the mirror, and you know, he's like hanging out the window, and like, I don't know what kind of shape he was in, but. I was just like, holy crap. I was like, I don't want to drive anymore this month, this year. You know, I mean, I've been driving since then, but I don't know what was... Part of what was happening, I think, was that the weather suddenly got really good. You know, whenever the weather gets really good, everyone gets just a little nuts. Just a little carefree. Until they land in someone else's trunk kind of thing, you know? But anyway... That was last week. I've been driving real careful since, let me tell you. Let me tell you. Yeah, I don't know what people are thinking, you know, when they do stuff like that. I don't know what that derelict dude was thinking. You know? I think it's really selfish to drive recklessly. Because if you do do someone else in, it, yeah, sure, it's by accident, but you were acting stupid. So it was bound to happen kind of thing, you know? Anyway, whatever. So, Mike, how's the conference? How's the conference going? Sales, when you said you had two beat to hell axe heads, can you send me pictures or tell me about them? Like if if you if you were to bring one of them into working order, which one would you rather do? Are they different sizes? What time are we? Twenty two forty seven. Okay, we're coming down to the end of of the uh, of the live stream here, guys. Just another quarter hour, give or take. Yeah, I'm sure it's hot and humid down there, Mike. Uh, you know, it's funny because house construction has changed a lot. If you look at real old houses down in like Antebellum South and then and up around there and in Florida and stuff, like, you know, 200 year, years old, you know, Civil War era houses and stuff, they're made completely differently than houses are made today because they're not made to depend on...
funny the difference that a couple palmetto trees make. Right, of course. Um, but I read a lot about the difference in, in building back then when you didn't have air conditioning to fall back on, right? So you had these huge veran verandas, covered verandas wrapping around the whole thing. Big windows that you could open, real high roofs with like little vents or windows up near the top, right? The whole idea being to create kind of a, an airflow thing, right? Where, where, where the heat is going like way up and then out kind of thing. And you know, you've got shade and trees all around to sort of bring the, 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 um, the air temperature down a bit so that you're not sweltering. But nowadays, of course, everything is based on, on uh, yeah, all the houses have massive verandas, exactly. And so many houses, like modern houses nowadays, it's, they're built on the theory of the air conditioner, right? There's no difference between a house being built in Michigan, New York, Toronto, or like Miami, you know, like the, the current house is being put up. It's like you're just picking a house out of a catalog and throwing it anywhere in North America. Because they don't have to pay attention to airflow and and all that stuff anymore. But if if I like won a lot of money and I was building a house, I had a huge hunk of land somewhere. Because Quebec, especially around Montreal, it gets hot and sweaty and humid and 40 degrees or, you know. So I would want to try to build a house... With that philosophy see if I can build one that doesn't depend on air conditioning to keep from getting stank and hot in the summer you know I think that would be pretty cool oh really this is a slave auction house from 1850 ish yeah that would sober me right up crazy what we what people do to each other eh It's amazing to think that Hamza. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure your wife is probably pissed off, Hamza. If I'm up at like three or four or whatever, my wife is like, hey, what's going on, man? A couple of nights ago, I um, after I did my yard work and I was like, oh, I hurt. I sat down on my on the chair in my living room, put my laptop on my bed uh, on my lap. I was gonna watch some uh, Joe Robinette. Fell asleep. Four forty-five. My wife came down and said, "Get upstairs," <laughs> you know. I'm like, oh, you're headed to Fort Sumter in the morning. I would love to see that. <laughs> oh, you're having a great trip down there. So, okay, so Hamza, you're taking the Swedish one and the Italian one. Do a video on them, like a compare and contrast. Because those Italian axes look really weird to me. All my experience is like, is like either the ones that I build my, you know, build out of old heads or these Scandinavian sized one, uh, shaped ones, you know. I have no experience with those Italian axes. So I'm, I would love to know what you think, you know. I would love to know what you think. Did you watch the, the Wrangler Star video where he got all those Italian axes? Do any of you guys know what I'm talking about? He puts out so many videos that sometimes like one of the interesting ones will just disappear in the uh, in the crowd. But he did one where he got a whole bunch of, I think they were Italian axes. And like the, um, the blade shape on them, or the, the head shape on them was really different than I'm used to. You know? Like this, this, this to me is a blade shape. Right? That's my, you know, the Scandinavian look is my favorite, okay? I, I love everything about my Scandinavian axes. I love the looks of them. I love the feel. You know? I, I love the quality of them. I don't love the metal wedge, step wedge, but, you know, what else, right? Um, but yeah, those Italian ones, because they don't they're not that easy to get around here, you know? You know, they're not that easy to get around here, so I don't see myself getting to try one of them. 
So Hamza, if you can get, if you can try them both out together and do a video comparing and contrasting the two styles, how come this is not hanging? Okay, there we go. The one Scandinavian axe I have that sort of flies in the face of what I just said, of course, is this one, right? My, my carving axe. I think I'm going to do a follow-up review of this axe pretty soon, maybe this summer. Because now I've been using it for a long bloody time and it is still just holding up beautifully. And it still is heavy as crap. Heavy as hell, man. You know, if I could afford uh, some of those, uh, those boutique Scandinavian carving axes or the Viking axes, that would be nice. Especially something with a little bit more of a beard on it, but this axe has done me well. This axe has carved many a spoon. And maybe this some riddle carve a kuksa. But, and of course I take care of it. You know? I remember this was the second one I had because I got one and the, the hell of on the first one was all chewed up. It's like there were bugs had eaten it away or something. Hamza, you have to wait for two months Two months is not bad. I have a bass guitar that I waited nine months for. I, and you know what? I never mind waiting. It just gives me time to, 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 to get excited about it, you know? This is a really cool axe. You can't just use it for everything, though. This is real specific. This is a specific carving axe. And, like, you know, it's, it's a right-handed one. I'm trying to show you guys, see? Right, and on this side it's it's almost straight. It's not a symmetrical bevel on it. But Hamza, two months will go like nothing. You'll be fine. <clears throat> You'll be fine. Oh, Hamza, did you just make a new knife? Or are you did you get a new handmade knife? This one was handmade. I didn't make it. I got this one from a guy, an Australian knife maker, but he made that he made it by hand. I love it when stuff is made by hand. I love it. I would gladly pay for one guy to make something instead of a company to pound something out of a mold, you know? A lot of my stuff is handmade. For that reason, you know? Oh, I see. Okay. Okay. So you're, you're, you're working on one. All right. I should have a Kuksa coming. I, I ordered one from Soul of Siberia. Um, I came across him on Instagram. No, that's a stinking lie. I first came across him in a Joe Robinette video and looked him up on Instagram. And when I saw that his prices were so damn reasonable, I said, I want one. Um, but I'm waiting. I think it's going to be two months as well for, my, for the Kuksa. But I don't mind. I have no problem waiting on stuff. What I like about waiting on stuff is that I get to think about it before it arrives. If I like buy something spur of the moment, then it's suddenly here. And I, I didn't have time to get excited about it, you know? Yeah, that cooks us should be another like month and a half, I guess. And I don't know how long it's going to take for it to come from Russia. No idea. I mean, you guys know that when I uh, when um, Convoy SG sent me that that flint and steel kit recently, it took what two months for it to come. Like over a month of that was just sitting in the customs house in Montreal. Drives me crazy. <clears throat> yeah, Hamza, I'm going to want to see that knife when it, when it's made. Definitely do a video on it. I like the uh I like the handmade stuffs. 2257. We have 3 more minutes, guys. Anything you guys want want to talk about before we uh before, before I turn in for the night? 
I was supposed to do some practicing. I'm gonna. Be, I told you guys I'm gonna be playing a wedding in two weeks. I, I gotta get my bass playing skills up to scratch, but I'm not gonna practice tonight. I'm too tired. I think I'm gonna go to bed after this. I'm gonna go to bed. We're down to four people watching now anyway, so I think a lot of people have gone to bed. I'm going to redo this this shirt, by the way. I'm going to do a new version. I've changed my uh, my channel's tagline from Breathe Your Best to, I think it was Hit the Bush or something. Um, so I'm, I think I'm going to redo this this shirt. But I don't know if I should sell this one alongside the redone one or not. But, I mean, if... Like, next week there will be a beer glass. Fear not. Fear not. I just, I forgot it this week. Because, um, Tuesday's, like, it's my daughter's swimming lesson. And by the time we got home, like, my wife was coming home really late. So the daughter and I went to A&W for supper. And by the time we got home, it was just, like... In French, we say, you know, on arrivé en catastrophe, and I have no idea what the English term for it is, but, you know, we, we get home and everything is like, okay, we got to blum, 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 blum. And I was taking her to bed because I was, um, I was solo parenting and reading her stories and thinking, okay, got to go. <laughs> you know, I just, I ran down, threw the computer down, plugged in the phone, blah, 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 blah. Oh, got the beer, brought it down. Boom, boom, boom. Hey, friendlies, forgot the fucking glass. Okay. Mike's going to be angry, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so next week there'll be a, there'll definitely be a glass. The beer is better coming from a glass anyway. There's no beer that I can think of that's better straight from the bottle or straight from a can, you know? Nothing that I can think of anyway. Lots of excuses, but no solutions. There was a solution right there. Beer glass next week. 2300 hours guys I'm putting this baby to bed and then I'm putting me to bed so thanks for hanging out with me even those of you who showed up late that's fine by me uh oh really Mike drop me a, a p.m. in uh yes sir. bottles definitely better than I can but Mike uh, drop me a, a p.m. through Instagram because if you're going to be in for a night I think we should do like a, a drink or even just a coffee if you don't have a lot of time we definitely should hang for at least an hour. So, good night, guys. Thanks for hanging out with me. Hamza, thanks for being up so late. I'm always really interested to hear what you have to say. And uh, I'll see you guys next week. Thanks for watching, guys.